Back in 2019, a group of scientists quietly proposed something radical, an invisible ceiling on human endurance. Not a psychological barrier, not a physical one, but a metabolic law written deep within us. They claim that no matter how far you run, climb, or ride, no matter how strong your heart or unbreakable your will, your limit is defined by one simple thing. How much food your body can digest, your mind can push through pain, your muscles can adapt to impossible terrain, but without fuel, the fire goes out. Their theory called it the metabolic ceiling, the point where your body, for all its resilience, simply can't process more than about two and a half times your resting metabolism. Go beyond that and you start burning through yourself. It was a humbling notion, suggesting that endurance wasn't purely about mental toughness or elite training, but biology, digestion, absorption, survival. But this theory left questions hanging in the thin air of debate. Did it apply to the world's greatest endurance athletes? The outliers, the superhumans who seem to live beyond ordinary physiology? People like Killian Jornet, who in a single month climbed 72 summits, each more than 1,400 feet and cycled 2,500 miles, sustaining himself on spoonfuls of olive oil for calories. Could even he be confined by this biological law? A team of scientists, led by Andrew Best from the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts and Herman Ponser of Duke University, the same Ponser who helped write that original 2019 paper, set out to find the truth. They gathered 14 of the world's most accomplished ultra-endurance athletes. Runners, triathletes, record seekers who test the boundaries of human metabolism on every continent. Each athlete drank water infused with isotopes, molecules that allow scientists to trace precisely how much energy the body burns. They carried this hidden chemistry into six-day ultra-marathons, 24-hour record attempts, and brutal multi-week journeys like Joe McAnally's fastest known time across the Arizona Trail. Every drop of sweat, every breath, every calorie was accounted for, and the results? On the surface, they shattered the limit. Some athletes were burning up to seven times their resting metabolism, a number that defied the proposed ceiling, but there was a catch. These were short bursts days or weeks of effort where the athletes plunge deep into calorie debt. They could burn stored fat and sometimes even muscle to make up the difference. But that kind of borrowing couldn't last. Joe lost tons of weight running the Arizona Trail. Best explained. You can live beyond your ceiling for a while, just like you can run faster than your marathon pace for a sprint. But eventually, the debt comes due. If you're burning 9,000 calories a day but only managing to eat 7,000, your body's reserves begin to collapse. You can live on deficit for weeks, even a month, but sooner or later the balance must be paid. So Best and Ponser looked deeper, past the moments of glory into the rhythm of daily life. They measured the same athletes during normal training weeks when they weren't racing or breaking records to create a personalized map of energy use. How many calories could each runner truly sustain? Not for a week or a month, but across an entire year of living, training, and recovering. And there, the pattern reappeared. Again and again, no matter the athlete, no matter the discipline, the numbers gravitated back toward that same value. Two and a half times resting metabolism. In the graphs they built, each point became a story. On the far left, blue dots representing bursts of effort. Some climbed as high as seven times baseline metabolism, symbolic of those fleeting days of superhuman output. But as the timeline stretched, six weeks, 30 weeks, 52 weeks, every dot began to settle near that same steady plateau. 2.5, the body's silent truce with its own limits. One runner had managed an extraordinary six-week stretch averaging four times resting metabolism, covering almost 2,000 miles or 332 miles per week. But even that Herculean push existed within the short-lived twilight before the body demanded balance. So what about the legends? The ones who seem to live beyond the edge? The researchers turned their gaze to Killian Jornet and triathlon world champion Christian Blumenfeld 
Using their public training data, they estimated the year-long metabolic cost of their lives, journey after months of climbing and cycling across endless summits, averaged about 2.75 times his resting metabolism. Blumenfeld, relentless in both training and racing, reached roughly 2.8 to 2.9, the difference barely above the limit and still within the same physiological neighborhood. It seemed the law held even for the gods of endurance. And yet, Ponser himself, the architect of the theory, had started to doubt its rigidity. Because new evidence had begun to surface from another world of endurance. Professional cycling Grand Tour riders spending three brutal weeks in the Giro d'Italia, burning over four times their resting metabolism, somehow managed to hold their weight steady. That meant they weren't just burning that much. They were absorbing that much digesting and processing the impossible. How? Perhaps it was technology. Modern sports nutrition pushing the envelope of digestibility gels, drinks, and carbohydrate blends engineered to flow through the gut like liquid fire. Maybe the human digestive system, like the rest of the body, could be trained. The scientist's graph revealed another mystery too. A curve that looked eerily familiar to those who study performance. On one axis, time. On the other, energy. At short durations. Wild spikes of output. Then gradually, a slope descending toward the asymptote. The steady line of sustainability. It mirrored the concept of critical speed. The pace a runner can sustain indefinitely without collapse. Above that speed, you're borrowing energy. Living on credit. Below it, you endure. Here, it was the same principle, just stretched across days, weeks, and years. The question was, what dictates the shape of that curve? Could it be fat reserves? The ability to borrow more when carrying more fuel within you? Or was it metabolic flexibility? The efficiency to burn fat at higher intensities? Sparing precious carbohydrates? Maybe it wasn't purely metabolic at all? Maybe the curve bent to the weight of recovery, the quiet need for sleep, or even the unseen fatigue of the mind. Because endurance isn't just a battle of fuel and fire. It's a negotiation between energy and emotion, between the will to continue and the body's quiet plea to stop. When Jornet climbs a mountain ridge in the mist, when McConaughey runs through the desert night, their hearts pound not just from effort but from meaning. They're chasing the edge of something that science is still trying to define. A place where biology meets belief. Perhaps that's the real lesson of the metabolic ceiling, not that it's an unbreakable wall, but that it's the line where human physiology meets human spirit. The body may be bound by digestion, by mitochondria, by oxygen uptake, but the choice to keep moving, to balance right at that limit for days, weeks, years, that's something else entirely. Every athlete in Ponser's study lived in that fragile equilibrium. Each day they burned just enough, ate just enough, slept just enough to stay afloat on the razor's edge of possibility. Not breaking the law of endurance, but learning to dance with it. And that dance, the constant oscillation between effort and rest, hunger and satisfaction, power and depletion, is the rhythm of human life itself. You push, you fall, you recover. You learn how to feed your own fire without letting it consume you. Maybe we don't need to break the metabolic ceiling to touch transcendence, Maybe the beauty lies in how close we can live to it. How perfectly we can balance on the line between possible and impossible. For Killian Journey, for Blumenfeld, for McConaughey, and for every runner, climber, or dreamer chasing a horizon. This is the real endurance. Not the sprint toward a finish line, but the steady burning conversation between what your body can do and what your spirit dares to ask of it. Because somewhere beyond the numbers, beyond the science and graphs and equations, there's a simple truth. Endurance is not just about surviving the effort, it's about learning day after day how to stay alive within it.